The next paragraph, um, they addressed uh, PPE or personal protective equipment. Concern there was if you have inactive members who have gear and you've got new members coming in, or the inactive member may have gear that's better than the, the active member that that gear is not available. I'll get you out to be honest. Okay, next one. <clears throat> We're in the process of changing our culture and setting the bar higher. We need every single member in our organization to adhere to wire membership, uh, membership expectation policy. If we do not, the policy in, is invalid and those of us who are trying to implement it loses, loses credibility. Go ahead. Go ahead. So Let's I can explain to you people here, this portion of this, I was a part of developing that. That was a group of people that wrote that. And I do believe most of it's true. However, I'm going to say um, Mr. Hansen has provided us a packet here of people that we had on the department at the time who had only been to two events in two years. People that had, we had not seen in an entire year. These people here are in no comparison. Paul and Melissa over here, they are some of the top responders. You can't argue that, right? They are in no comparison to what you're talking about up there. What I'm trying to share is where the organization was, the philosophy of the organization, which we all still believe in, and where we're going. So uh, go ahead and do the next one. And so, you know, summary of that report, there were 19 members were uh, identified with an action plan. And some of them, you're absolutely correct. Uh, when you start a new program and you're trying to change a culture, there's a lot of uh, just names on a list, if you will, that need to be cleaned up. And, that, and so in that report, nine recommendations for termination. I don't use the term termination. Um, to me, termination is you terminate an employee Volunteers, you dismiss because it's not an employment issue. That's my opinion. Um, the committee planned to meet with seven members, which is similar to what I offered. And out of the eight, I had three. And uh, the committee asked me to meet with three members, which I did. So what we're doing in this, in this process that brought everybody here is really no different than what we did back there. And this was an excellent report. It was well done. You felt it necessary to delegate to your lieutenants the policy and the other part of the training commitment, but why not delegate to your lieutenants to meet with their, you said like Paul and Melissa and Renee, and then they like to work better with Scott. Why not delegate to Lieutenant Hobbit the fact that he needs to meet with those reserve members and tell them up and bring them up to standard? I think that would have probably worked better. It may have, but um, the seven members that the committee identified that they were going to meet with, they felt that they had either a report or that was part of the recruit retention officer's uh, position requirements to do that. The three members that they wanted me to meet with, the committee uh, wanted me to meet with them. <laughs> that was their recommendation to me. Um, it's interesting that you said that because I did something similar to what you're talking about. Um, with the, the letter that went out um, telling them that they're on probation and that they could meet with me, uh, actually delegating the area of their responsibility, just what you're talking about. Uh, and it actually offended one of our members in that they felt that should come from me. So it depends on where you're at and who you are um, on how you want to receive that information. Uh, and we've got some, some area to grow uh, as a requires as an organization um, and our leadership in a, different, a lot of different levels. Again, you're comparing people that go on a lot of calls that have current certifications. These, these people here, I see lost certification. I see hasn't been seen in two years. I see um, has been on one call <coughs> in one year. These are not those people. And I mentioned that when we are started a new program, that there's going to be people on a list that need to be cleaned off. And I, I'm not comparing those people with then the you five. You shouldn't have given us a list of those people I, that's in our package. I gave you the report that was given to me. Oh, and it was good. well done. Thank you. Let's move on. Okay, so bringing us forward a bit, um, in October of 2018, back to somebody had mentioned call volume. Um, because we don't run as many calls, 
as um, the department was that I originally uh, presented, we reduced it from 30 down to 20. Next, please. Uh, and one of the things that we noticed is <coughs> that um, we were talking about seven drills per quarter. And what we found out, or what he has, we you know, rode with this, is I could have done a drill and prevented a drill, and it was uh, 30 minutes, and it's counted as a drill. Um, Eric could have been at a drill that was three hours, and it counted as a drill. So when you're looking at drills, I got one drill, he got one drill, but the intent was 14 hours, and that was always the intent. So in uh, October of 2018, we went away from calling it drills and calling it hours, because that's what was important. Um, we also did away from having just those one areas that um, counted as drills that we looked at earlier to where we, we opened it up so that there was more opportunity for people to train. Um, I think your hand was up first. Go ahead. Just a quick question. Go back to slide. Now, that 20 on your alarms, unless I've gone senile or, or whatever, started at 40 down to 30 down to 20, correct? Correct. correct. The training requirement stayed the same. Stayed the same. So you have the alarms that they have to uh, respond to to be active and kept the, the training requirement. You've got half as many alarms that they need to respond to in the same degree of training for half as many alarms? I well, mean, now we're getting into a philosophy about training and, and is 14 hours in emergency services enough training? for our members to respond to and, the state of and, we, says and it is. we'll get we'll get to to the training and, and look at our neighbors which was a question about you know these 14 hours to the, we'll look at that so. uh, one thing i noticed about all of this is that it seems like there's a huge gap between april of 16 and october of 18. Well, because we were we were using the system that was in play, and then we adjusted it. But, so during that time, from April of 16 to October of 18, there were no issues with people meeting the requirements? There were issues, that's what we adjusted. Can you tell me when you guys decided to enforce the prior training requirements that we were put on probation for on October 13th when we it was received actually, the email. When were we told that you were going to start enforcing those? Because as you just stated, and I know very well, there's a lot of people that did not meet the, these requirements for close to two years. And then all of a sudden, we were on probation. It actually wasn't all of a sudden. And um, it was actually the quarter back before this I know. where we did... Um, actually two quarters before, where, um, and I think it was Kay Allen, you know, she had mentioned that um, there was a week into that quarter when that was brought up as far as her um, not meeting the requirements. And, and so we adjusted it and gave everybody kind of a, a free pass, if you will, during that quarter. But what I'm asking is when did you put out a communication to the rest of the department that our free pass was gone? Before we ever, were put on probation. We've never said that we. Um, Why weren't had people a, put on probation before that? That were obviously not meeting the standard. Because we were adjusting the, the requirements. And then when we got to the point where you were put on probation, regardless of whether we communicated it or we didn't communicate it. That's um, a big deal. That's, that's a big deal. Wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. Um, <laughs> We all knew that we were working on requirements since 2015. Um, you had three months as a group that, that we're talking about to meet the, the 14 to 20, which we all were working on. So. I just have to state really quickly, um, you stated a few minutes ago that we're working on quality versus quantity, but I disagree because when I was told I wasn't meeting the requirement, I was given four hours of Wisconsin EMS training protocols and curriculum to, to watch these four videos. How 
does that help my training and make me a more competent EMT? It's, there was a push to get everybody's hours in, regardless um, of whether they were quality or not. And I... There was an opportunity to expand your opportunity to get the training so that you could meet it. Um, I mean, there... I'm gonna interrupt here just okay, for a moment. Because um, while I know that this is personal, and while I know that this is, you know, touches home, at the same time, council is not here to determine individuals' status. That is, that is truly against why we're here and what we do. Unfortunately, we all have our own opinion. Well, unfortunately, we have our all have our own opinions, but we really can't delve into individuals. Why was this individual this? Why was this? Doesn't Excuse the quality me? of we're, training we're matter? We're talking about training standards, and I appreciate how you stuck to the training standards. Does this count for this? Training standards have gone down. Who shifts have gone up, or whatever? The training so standards speak, hasn't gone uh, down. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, okay. So let's just be careful yeah, that we don't delve into training. the personal because we can't do that as a counselor. And if that, excuse me, really excuse yeah. me. Yeah. We, let's let's focus on. That's what that's the divide. That's the divide. Hey, are you listening, everyone? Because I will just stop the meeting because this can get very contentious. So let's keep it on where we need to be talking and on the level, please. You all have a level of expertise that is important for us to hear, but we do need to keep it on a non-personal level. Okay? Sure, you guys can put up with a lion's old management, management problem. So, one question I had was, we never really got to what the state standard was compared to your standard, but if, if the hours that you were trying to reach eventually got to 14, you said, I don't understand why, as a citizen, why it wouldn't count that somebody who shows up to like an EMT shift or whatever shift, they actually show up every day and go on calls, why those hours wouldn't be counted towards the 14 because I personally, if somebody in my family had a medical emergency, I would want the guy who shows up every day, even though according to you he doesn't have the 14 hours yet rather than the guy who shows up and just watches a movie, that doesn't make any sense. The hands-on training seems like it would be much more critical a training than just watching a film or going over a drill where it's not really like in real life time. I think that's a legitimate question. I so, um, <coughs> thank you. It, it is. Um, the quality of training obviously is, is important. And when you do training on um, some, some areas, it's mundane. I mean, it's the same stuff over and over. And I, and I, I give you that. Um, back to response, it's not been in, you know, this is the response. So if you're required to be a member to be going to calls, you're gonna be getting some of that. But on top of that, you need to have, when you have a call, you don't have control totally of what the, the training is, if that's what you're, you're using. Well, I'm just saying, if let me, you're... Let me say, answer your question. And so, um, you can't use that by itself. I'm not saying that in the future. Maybe we adjust it and, and we figure out a way to do that. Right now, we don't have that. Back to um, showing up for for um, the shift and, <clears throat> and going on calls. Um, that, was a, that was an issue we ran into. And one of the issues we ran into is we had... Uh, she mentioned uh, Paul and Melissa. I, I don't want to. Please. When you have opportunity to train, you, you take those opportunities to do that. And, it, and it's up to all of us to be responsible to do some of that stuff. And when we know that we have our requirements and we have time to do that, then we should do that. I, right. I, I think I'll leave that. I was just thinking, but if there, there, you have the people who actually is, show up and are actually like doing resuscitation, or, or watching resuscitation. I'd rather see us as a city decide that those hours are critical hours where they're actually doing the hands-on work would be much more valuable than, as you're saying, going by a different state standard. And I'm, and I, I'm not disagreeing that there, 
you know, going on calls, that is, you know, that is the best training that you can, you can do. Um, when you're on the fire side of it, dealing with live fire training. Um, then why doesn't training, it count if it's the most valuable? I think he's answered your question, but in the future okay. maybe it will. It Was it you, Scott? Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to um, mention, that you and I had this conversation before, but the, one of the concerns that I had with the way that we changed the training requirement going from number of drills that you attended to an hour number, we required 14 hours. The way with that, we were running our drills. Um, if you did strictly EMS, you could only get a maximum of 14.5 hours per quarter. And most of our drills, especially EMS drills, run maybe an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. Um, we have a holiday <coughs> on a Monday, and the drill would be canceled for that day. So there was no possible way that even if a person came to every single EMS drill, that they could attain uh, 14 hours. And, and, and we recognize that, and that's why we opened it up to where those 14 hours, when you've got people on your ship, and they're there from four to eight, I don't know if there's anybody in the room that's more qualified to train, teach EMS than you. you got, you've got a captive audience, if you will, for from eight o'clock till four o'clock that you can teach them. So if they're not making it on the Monday because of whatever the circumstance, the crew's gone, it's a holiday, um, they had to be gone, there's no reason that we can't take responsibility for ourselves and, and train while we're there at the station. Kind of back what she was talking about. But so only those people that signed up on a regular basis would have that opportunity and no, that's not so true. The, the that's not true, Scott. Have that because opinion. people can come down on Saturday, they can come on Sunday, they can come anytime <clears throat> and put on train. And that's why we went to this standard. I need to move forward. Yeah, and I'm going to um, interrupt here just for a minute because, and you do need to move, move forward, and I appreciate you all. You have great questions. But it seems to me that what I'm hearing, I'm hearing people asking questions who are part of the fire department. And I'm getting the feeling that you didn't ask these questions when this was implemented or didn't know. That's not, that that's why I'm going through the process that we went through. So that's All of this was, so is this not is new to anybody. October 1st, 2018, and there's questions about how your county hours, do you have a regular opportunity, do, do our, does your department have a regular opportunity to review those hours and say this isn't working? Because obviously it's a work in progress for the last three years. Um, it seems like there needs, I'm seeing a disconnect. Well, um, I'm going to okay. put our training officer kind okay. of on the spot here and, and talk about um, training hours. And we actually got a recruit retention <coughs> person here also. Uh, we did reach out, you know, to those, you know, looking at this last scenario. Um, and when we got to where um, we had some folks that needed more training hours. So we, we did try to expand their opportunity. Uh, to get those hours. Christy, you have something to say? I can answer your question. Um, we started this when he came in as interim fire chief, and so, give me, he so that was 2015. It was January 15. of 2016. Okay. Is when this started. Is You're when correct. you sat us down. He came to this proposal with myself, Kurt Smith, Shannon, and Mike Cameron. Mike Cameron was very much opposed to it. I was on the fence. Kurt was opposed to it. But we agreed collectively that we would support him because he was our new chief and we wanted to support him. We did want change. We wanted the inactive people. It wasn't working. And I'm talking inactive people by people we didn't see for a year, an entire year, and then show up on a call. People, it was, it's not the same as these people. We did his plan, it didn't work. He adjusted it. Cody Frank was keeping track of the numbers. Six months, it still didn't work. Cody Frank adjusted it again. Another six months, it still didn't work. Cody Frank left, I believe, and it was left by the wayside. At that point, it that wasn't. That would have been 2016. Give me a time frame. How far are we now? I would say it was about early 2017 that okay. Cody left. Right. So and you can ask these people over here. The no, training I'm... requirements kind of was left by the wayside. We didn't have reports on training anymore. Um, it wasn't at the same requirement. It was, a, it just kind of dropped off. Then suddenly 
October, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong over here, people. Uh, suddenly, October 18, they all get mails that they're on, letters in the mail that they're on probation. I'm sorry, it is not coincidental that these people received letters that they're on probation because they politically spoke out against Mr. Hansen. That is, that is what I'm doing. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. It is He's not speaking. a coincidence. Thank you for your opinion. <clears throat> Okay, so next slide. So one of the things that